Another week, boys, and another TWAB. We're back, baby. The TWAB is alive and well, and we're excited for what's next with the upcoming launch of the Witch Queen. Just one more month ago, before we learn more about Savathun's influence and what that means for Guardians and our beloved Osiris. In addition to some nitty additions to gameplay, such as crafting and Pokey Pokey Glaive goodness, while we do want to share some news with our players, we also want to keep some secrets because there are a few unique surprises on the way that we want you to experience for your Yourselves. Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate the latest trailer for the Witch Queen that showcased Savathun's throne world? Because I don't know about you, but I'm still screaming in excitement, and the entire team here at Bungie can't wait to see your reactions to what's next. It's going to be a wild ride. So buckle that metaphorical seatbelt, friends. Before you dive into the latest trailer below, we did want to offer a small warning to players. Spoilers are coming. Be aware that the weeks leading up to the launch of the Witch Queen will include information that those averse to spoilers might want to avoid. Just be careful out there guardians by the way guys we did a more in-depth breakdown on the witch queen trailer as well as the game awards trailer together essentially drawing conclusions in regards to the abilities we've seen alchemy the exotic smg returning destinations if you're interested in that video a link to that will be in the description below with that being said artifact mods update insert orbs meme here artifact mods have been a huge talking point in our community and with the next season we're making a few changes that will bring back some popular anti-champion mods while also making some tweaks to the way masterwork armor works here's a rundown from the team on what players can look forward to in season 16. so from the team one of the consistent pieces of feedback that we've been wanting to act on for a while involves the unlocking of artifact mods starting in season 16 players will no longer be limited to the number of artifact mods they can unlock this means that players can feasibly unlock all 25 artifact mods by the end of the season while we have some small adjustments to the amount of xp required to unlock artifact mods 1 through 12 in general the pace of unlocking these first 12 artifact mods should be close to what we've seen in season 15's artifacts for each unlock after the 12th though increased experience will be required for the next artifact mod to be unlocked so the choice of which order to unlock mods will require some decision making and if you change your mind you can still reset your artifact and make your picks again oh okay for a while there i was just wanting them to remove the cost of resetting but the idea of over committing here in experience to unlock every one of these mods do you know how potent that is now when it comes to artifact mods themselves we're bringing back a few perennial favorite anti-champion mods including anti-barrier scout rifles and bows and i've done some work to make disrupting an overload champion which can be done this season with auto rifles and smgs more reliable than in previous seasons we'll also be highlighting the new glaive weapon archetype coming in the witch queen through a variety of artifact mods including an option to make your glaive the solution to unstoppable champions as well as having a few new artifact mods that will enhance some of the new weapon perks okay first up anti-barrier scout rifles and bows fellas break out that whispering slab wolf tone etc and overload for smgs and auto rifles we'll probably get a list of weapons together to collect for all this but interesting here that the glaive will actually have a way to stun unstoppable champions i'm actually under the assumption that the charge shot from the glaive is what's going to be able to stun those champions now to take a little bit of pressure off your vault space we are also making some adjustments to the way masterwork armor works starting with the launch of witch queen you could change the energy type of a fully masterwork piece of armor for a much reduced cost a fully masterwork piece of legendary armor can be changed to another type for the cost of 10,000 glimmer and one upgrade module while a fully masterwork piece of exotic can be changed to another energy type for the cost of 20,000 glimmer and one upgrade module interesting so it's not actually consuming ascended shards anymore now the cost of changing a piece of armor and is energy type before it is fully masterwork remains unchanged so the lead up cost is still the same but once you actually masterwork it the cost will just be an upgrade module and glimmer now if only bungie would remove the glimmer cap right now closing out we are also making some changes to the way guardians create orbs of power with weapons elements of the new weapon crafting system will encourage you to use many different weapons and ask you to burn hard-earned masterwork materials on weapons that you may only be using for a few hours just to generate orbs that seemed like a tall order this combined with our design to act on consistent feedback that players want to be able to generate orbs of power with exotic weapons that do not yet have a catalyst led us to the implementation we'll be using in the witch queen and beyond orb generation on weapon multi kills will no longer be a function of a weapons masterwork status but will instead be provided by a suite of armor mods which are unlocked automatically for all players and which plug into the helmet armor mod socket each such mod will apply the orb generation effect to all weapons you have equipped of a 
a particular damage type. So a single mod will cover multiple weapons in your arsenal if they share a damage type. Now this also applies to weapons that change damage types, such as hard light or kinetic weapons with osmosis. Now we will continue to create exciting exotic catalysts over the next few seasons. But in the meantime, you will be able to generate orbs with Cloud Strike, Thorn, Thunderlord, Teraba, and any other weapon in the game. All right, so that's good. Essentially, every weapon will be quote unquote masterwork without actually the stab bump or the exotic catalyst. Bungie had mentioned that they wanted to add kill trackers to weapons without you actually having to masterwork it. Now you're going to be able to supply orbs based on the damage type that's matching with whatever mod it is you have socketed. What I'm interested in, does the helmet piece have to have the mod socket and energy type to match the weapon? Meaning, do I have to have a solar weapon and the energy type of my helmet be solar? And the other thing that I'm curious about is what is the cost of this helmet mod socket? You know, I like rocking targeting perks or even ammo finder. Don't get me wrong, this looks like a buff considering how many weapons we have exotic wise that don't have exotic catalysts. But at the same time, depending on the cost of that mod, that to me is going to be the deciding factor. I will say this though, guys, if you have seen the armor from the new dungeon, the 30th anniversary armor, I highly, highly advise doing the master dungeon and getting the artifice armor pieces. The reason for this, guys, again, he'll grant you an extra mod socket for your artifact mods. And I bring this up because considering we just learned what we learned about how we're going to eventually be able to unlock all of our artifact mods over a season, the more slots you have, the better. And even going back to the point here of the helmet armor mod for orb generation, it's a good chance that may actually be a low cost mod, but it's still going to take up a slot. So long story short, I'm about to be grinding a ton of Grasp of Avers. Now moving on, 30th anniversary content. Will they or won't they? Has been a major question surrounding the 30th anniversary events. We have game shows, we have weird sarcastic horse made of stardust and puns, and we have a dungeon that will make you laugh and scream at the same time. Because so many have been loving the new activities, a common concern is that Dares of Eternity and other eventful goodies will be disappearing as we say goodbye to season 15. Fret not, young horse whisperer, because 30th anniversary content, both free and paid, will not be placed in the Destiny content vault with the launch of the Witch Queen. We'll have another update about this later this year, but expect to enjoy the Zer-led adventures through 2022. This obviously involves the dungeon as well, guys. Now, Prime Gaming? Oh, we've got some Prime loot back, an exotic emote, a ghost shell, a sparrow, and the Astera Blade legendary ship. Now, some issues that are going on in regards to the colorblind modes. We are currently investigating issues with colors being harder to distinguish across multiple colorblind modes after 3.4.02. Yeah, we had some people jump into the stream and said that the colorblind mode settings weren't working for them. Outside of that, we've got some known issues. Nothing here about nothing manacles getting patched. What the hell? Now, Operation Save New Lights. Another shout out before we go riding into the sunset with Star Horse. Days of Eternity caused some unforeseen mayhem when it pulled new lights into the activity despite lacking the required power level. The Destiny 2 community blew us away when everyone came together to help new players by kicking off Operation Save New Lights. Higher level players were lowering their gear levels to get into instances with our precious blueberries only to re-equip the gear they know and love to kick those foes in the face and make the treasurable horse proud. We even jumped in ourselves. Kindness, selflessness, strength, these are all the attributes that make a true guardian. And every single person that lent their help showed that they have earned the guardian title and wear it with pride. It was great to see the community come together and put a little good back out into the world. And we wanted to share our gratitude with the special circumflex diacritic emblem as a thank you. It was almost like royal peace if something like that was contingent on a sassy space horse. Oh, look at this emblem, fellas. That looks good. Finally, sorry to the new lights that had to see me repeatedly blow myself up with 1k. We all have our flaws. Don't judge. Now, our final note here from Bungie. For those asking, our Threads of Lost venture into looking good continues. It's called Fashion Sweetie. Look it up. And we've already seen so many incredible submissions. We'll share our next batch of winners here soon. But for now, keep inspiring us with those looks. To enter, share a shot of your Guardian's appearance page and use hashtag Threads of Light on Instagram or Twitter. You can also tag at Destiny the Game or our account for your region for more visibility. We'll have more to share over the next couple of weeks, including more on gamuts, weapon crafting, and a few other goodies that we can't wait to show off. Stay tuned, and in the meantime, stay fresh and be kind. See you soon. Love, Hippie. That's right, guys. We've got somebody else writing twabs now. Fellas, that is your first twab for 2022. We've got our artifact mods, or a couple of them, that we know of next season. We'll also obtain the ability to create orbs with whatever weapon we want, as well as some economical changes in regards to the energy type on our armor pieces. Let me know in the comments below what you think here, fellas. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. <laughs>